Okay, here we go with some more Netrunner. It's the second game between the criminal Gabriel Santiago, consummate professional, and the corporation Jinteki, personal evolution. We played the same matchup uh, twice in a row. Hopefully now we've both learned important lessons from our first game and neither of us should make any of the stupid mistakes we made before. So there he goes with the transaction-based economy again. You know, the, the, well, I already said that the transaction-based economy causes him to draw through the deck to try to find money-making cards instead of slowly only taking the mandatory draw. But the other thing it does is it causes him to spend all his influence points in deck construction on those transaction cards. Uh, only hedge fund is neutral. Uh, these other transactions all cost influence. In you saw he also was playing anonymous tip to help draw uh, through that deck. So he left HQ open this time, so I run it immediately. And as a fetal AI, I get two points, but. You know, he's pretty happy about doing three net damage on my first turn and also costing me two credits. You, know, you could say almost that, you know, on the first turn, a credit might even be more valuable uh, than it is later in the game. Could even be worth more than a uh, an agenda point. Now I'm going to have to spend my second turn drawing a ton of cards to uh, heal from that. He really got a lot of those uh, transactions early. He's got a nice mountain of credits. He could even raise a wall of thorns, although I don't think he has one. At least I haven't seen one. Okay, so again, I get the Desperado early, and I start running. And an Edge of World, glad to see that trashed. Can't get fooled by it now. There could be more, though. Edge of World is really, you know, it, you can, it's hard to trick people with it. It's much better to use it to protect an upgrade, or use it in the late end of game when the runner is forced to run it. So he ices up HQ, and I had the sneak door in my hand. I just didn't play it until I had to, and as soon as I played it, I used it immediately. That same turn, oh, and I got snared, so... On the one hand, I got the three credits, uh, but snare hit me, and I'm tagged. I don't care too much about the tag. I don't think he's got uh, Scorched Earth. And I don't have any resources, but I'm going to trash it anyway, so I don't forget about it. And this is why I'm thinking about it, because I realized I didn't have any resources on the table. Do I really need to trash that tag right now? I could draw a card instead. And then in the end, I do think I decided to remove it. Yeah. One nice thing about, you know, Desperado and also Gabe's ability is that if there's a fetal AI or a snare in HQ, well, you just got your successful run credits, so you can use those to pay for the fetal AI or to pay to remove a tag, uh, even if you get in there with an empty economy. Doing a lot of thinking here. I'm kind of worried he's going to ice up the archives, uh, which would kind of hurt me, because I don't have any icebreakers on the table whatsoever. Uh, so see, he's going to start working on a new server. Meanwhile, I have to spend this turn drawing cards. And 
and he does score brain trust when I couldn't do anything about it. He had plenty of credits there that could be a neural katana. You can't really risk running into it. Even though if I did run into a neural katana, I still would have scored the agenda. It's actually since I had just drawn up my hand that might have been worth it. But if it was a snare and not a brain trust, he had enough credits to res neural katana and snare. That's an instant kill. So I keep you now that I got cards in my hand. I go back to using sneak door. Try I pay all the money to trash that sand sand before he can even play it. Didn't really have to do that, but I wanted to. It's one less card he can put down on the table to try to fool me with. Okay, so now he's iced up the archives. So unlike the first game where he left R&D open for me, uh, you know, I have nowhere to run here. And I looked through my archives, I mean the heap, and I realized two out of three of the Crypsis are in the heap. And I, you know, this, I have deja vu, but I had a special order in my hand, so I went to go get the third Crypsis. Well, I still had the chance to. And then I install it immediately where it's going to be protected. Uh, in my hand, it could get net damaged away. And then I have to draw a deja vu if I have any left. Right, on the table, I know he doesn't have really any way to trash programs. So it's, it's pretty safe there. Of course, you know, paying five to install the Crypsis cost me all my money. And the really, the only way I have to get money besides one click for one credit is to run, but I can't run because there's dangerous ice everywhere that I don't want to impale myself on, or at least I'm too risk averse to impale myself on. It's mostly because he has a pile of credits over there. If it, his economy was lower, uh, I might do it. Okay, so there he goes installing two cards in that server over there. And he's doing it at just the right time. You know, my Crypsis is not ready. But I mean, if that was a Neural Katana, I would need to take two credits and a virus counter. And then run. So instead, I use my inside job. He saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> it was a snare protecting another San San. I had enough cards in my hand to uh, to deal with it. But my economy is toast. I have no money. With a hedge fund, he has plenty of money. So I draw my hand back up to full health, and I start taking credits the old-fashioned way. Its score is still only 2-2. I just have to build uh, enough credits to be able to break in to uh, HQ or archives using the sneak door to be able to build my economy again to safely just run those ice one time to see what they are. 
then I'll be able to load up on credits again until he can ice up some more. I'll also be able to drain his economy by forcing him to res some ice. Most importantly, I'm just, you know, I just want to stay in the game and not die, which is why drawing cards uh, was a higher priority than taking credits. Yeah. Having a couple turns where I can't run might allow him to score an agenda or two, but he's not at six, so it's not the end of the world. He's building up now a huge pile of money. He managed to draw all those hedge funds. And he puts another ice in the archives before it can get back to running. So now it's sort of arbitrary whether I decide to use Sneak Door or to go straight to HQ. Two unrezzed ice on each. And now I got my uh, compromised employee. Right, so now I've got the uh, the incentive to run. So it'll actually help me build up my economy a little bit faster when I do start running. Installed another card in that remote server over there, and he installs a card out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, that's interesting. You know, just an empty, naked remote server not doing anything. I know he doesn't have an asset-based economy, so that could be an agenda. It could be a snare. I don't think I've seen three snares. Uh, it could be an edge of world. It could be an upgrade, but it'd be kind of weird for it to be an upgrade. I trashed one Sansan, -san, and I saw the other one in that server. So he probably doesn't have a third one, seeing how much influence he spent on all those transactions. You know, Sansan -san is three, so that's what, six on... And then he's got Anonymous Tip. So yeah, he scores a Nisei with the Sansan. -san, getting an end the run counter. Um, but now that big economy that he built up over all that time is gone. He spent it all rezzing that sand sand. He's only got a, a few credits left. Meanwhile, I'm spent a turn taking a bunch of credits. He's got a few too many cards in his hand. He's tossed his summon to archives. Alright, let's get the running machine working again. Get a virus counter. Get a second virus counter because HQ and archives both have two ice. And take a credit. Now I think I'm ready to run in the next turn. And none of the ice they have is uh, particularly strong. That this shouldn't be enough credits. Really ices up that sand sand. He spent a lot of money resing it. And he can't afford me going in and trashing it. And he wants that to be able to score Nisei's and Brain Trusts more quickly. He could basically score a Brain Trust out of hand if he draws one. And there's only one on the table. Okay, so here I get a Crescentus, and normally, you know, he doesn't have very big ice that I would want to derez. Um, but his economy is low, so if he does, and mine, so if he uh, does res an ice, I might want to derez it if it was a Neural Katana that costs four, because even four is significant. So I ran the HQ, and he chose not to res. I walked right in. And I took my three credits, now I'm back in business. I didn't have to use my virus counters, I didn't have to use any money, I just got three dollars, I got to look at his neural EMP.
Alright, so there, very importantly, he takes enough credits to set off Snare. This is why I'm asking, you know, how many credits he has. So, since he has enough to set off Snare, I do the account siphon. So, he's going to do the same strategy, where he tries to spend all his credits so that I cannot siphon them. He has a chum and a neural katana. So I let the chum happen, figuring just adding two strength to anything else is just going to cost me two credits extra to break the second ice, and chum itself would have cost me five credits and a virus counter. So it's cheaper to let the chum go off I have enough credits to break just about anything, and I de-res that Neural Katana, which, you know, it cost him four credits to res that. So again, he spent his money on something, and then I took away that resource that he spent money on. And now I also know that I'll be able to run HQ safely without paying any credits uh, until he has enough to re-res the Neural Katana. Right, and now that he has no money, I run that other server, and I score. He has no money, he wasn't going to res those ice. I guess they could have been data mines, uh, but they weren't. Or at least he didn't res them. If he had, uh, I probably would have just eaten them and taken my credits from my compromised employee. He could have used his end the run counter from his Nisei, but I had more clicks. I would have just run again. It would have been a waste of a counter. I also ran R&D while he had no credits. See, having no credits makes me completely fearless. You can't res ice, you can't set off a snare. I'm just gonna run all your servers. So he took a couple credits there and installed a new card in that server. Uh, it does have a Sansan, -san, so he, if it's a brain trust, he could just score it on the next turn. So I've sorta gotta run in and check on it. So I do so. He spends one credit to Rez Akataro and gets the chum for free off of that. So now that I know it's not an agenda back there, and it was just a chum, I let the chum go off, and I back out. Right? There's no reason for me to spend credits uh, breaking the chum or running down the server, or spend my virus counters, if there's no agenda down there. Also, seeing as he only has one credit, <laughs> I'm still going to go running. Go run at R&D. And I run HQ. He's only got a Neural Katana there. I know he can't res it with his one credit. And I see the Neural EMP again, just about every time I see that. The score is 4-4, four, four, but because, you know, he let his credits get too low, I was able to completely rebuild my economy with the HQ runs. He's installed another card in that server, but I only have one virus counter. So instead, I run the card he installed in the middle of nowhere, which is a fetal AI. He was, you know, desperately trying to... Uh, you know, is, is he was drawing a ton of cards. He's using anonymous tip. You know, he got probably flooded with agendas. He had to put, you know, he couldn't just keep them in his hand. That's the least safe place. Uh, he wasn't ready to install them in the server and advance them. Yeah. It's a little psychological thing. Just put it out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it could have been a snare. But, you know, I had to check on it, call his bluff, and it was good. But in turn, he scores another Nisei. Now, yeah, he could have used that first Nisei token to keep me out of the, um, the you know, the fetal AI that was standing alone in its own server. But again, I would have just run there again. It would have been a waste of the Nisei token. 
The Nisei token is really only good for ending runs that cost the runner a lot of resources. You know, if I run his, you know, big long server and I get to the end and there's an agenda there and I don't have enough resources to run it again that same turn, then the Nisei token is, is powerful because it, you know, would keep the agenda in that server another turn, likely allowing him to advance and score. The score is 6-6. Six, six. I knew his hand was flooded enough at one point to put a fetal AI in the middle of nowhere. So I run archives directly. He can't res ice. And there's a fetal AI in there. So I win. Always run the archives when you have six points. If there's any face down cards in there, you have to check before the game ends to see what's in there. I cannot stress that enough.